good morning everyone good morning good morning it's been a little while since we've had a chat it's been a little while since we've had a chat so i thought i would jump on and uh have a chat about um yeah some things that you i feel that you need reminding about because it's spring so i hope you're if you live in the uk i hope you're having a um a really good break it's um obviously it's the first um day of a long weekend um because it's easter so wherever you are joining me on the planet i hope you are doing well so for those of you that don't know me my name is june allen and i am the founder of the art of greatness at juneallen.net so i am a racial trauma therapist i'm also a business coach and i'm also a retreat facilitator so i'm really passionate about helping black women um experience unapologetic self-love and i do that through exploring the relationship with self the relationship with the mother wound and i and um also exploring the, the systems of oppression that impact that okay so um i'm also in recovery in 12-step recovery so i also talk about um the link between racism systems of oppression and racial sobriety okay hi thanks for joining so today i am going to be talking about some spring reset reminders but before i kind of get into it um i just want to give a little bit of housekeeping so because it's the long easter weekend this weekend i've actually got a special hi lydia thanks for joining i'm actually doing a easter special um next week not this weekend next weekend um, I have got a um, self-care workshop that I'm doing um, specifically around racial wellness. It's a half day retreat um, and there's two workshops that I'm going to be doing over the course of um, kind of like morning, sort of late lunch sort of thing. Um, so the two work two workshops. Hi, Levon. Thanks for joining. Um, the two workshops that are going to be um, there. The first one is going to be all about, you know, we're going to be exploring what is racial wellness, what does that mean, um, being a black woman, um, and we're going to be looking at that, what does that actually mean, and, um, you know, where you are now, and what you're going to need going forward, so there's going to be a workbook and stuff that goes with it as well, so not only are you, can you do um, stuff in the workshop itself, but you'll also have an opportunity to take the workbook home, so that you can continue um, doing the work. So the second workshop that we'll be doing um is you're gonna make a vision board okay you're gonna make a wellness a racial wellness vision board so not only will you have the tools to kind of figure out where you are now and where you want to go but you're also going to give yourself permission to dream i think this time of the year is is um i love this time of year because it's kind of you know you're coming out of the um the cold and all the rest of it and we're now transitioning into something that feels you know new and fresh and there's blossoms and there's daffodils and all of that kind of stuff so this is the perfect opportunity you know if you're if you're new to doing self-care with a racial perspective with a cultural context this is an opportunity for you to explore that in your self-care if you've you you know you're a seasoned sister and you've been doing this stuff for a while and you need a check in you know this is a really good opportunity for you to reset and relook at what what's going on for you at the moment and then you can sort of plan going forward so if you're interested in joining me for the racial wellness self care um half day retreat next saturday the 15th is from 9am till 1:30 um, click the link in my bio, go to heal.juneallen.net, that's heal.juneallen.net, that's heal.juneallen.net. It's £30 versus £60, okay, the full price is £60, but it's £30 only for the next 48 hours. So if you're interested in joining me, click the link in my bio and, and you can join me for that. The other piece of housekeeping that I have is that next Thursday I'm also doing um, our financial therapy circle um, in the Sacred Sister Sanctuary, that's an online mastermind that I have. Um, so this week we're going to be talking, it's an open session actually this Thursday, um, and we're going to be talking about, we, we kind of focus it around the 12 laws of abundance, but whatever you've got going on, it's an opportunity for you to come to the circle, to share what's going on, and you can get feedback and support from myself and the other sisters in the group as well. So if you're interested in joining me for that, you can also find the details in my, um, in my, in, in my bio. Okay, so let's crack on and get into today's topic. So for those of you that have just joined, my name is June Allen and I'm the founder of The Art of Greatness at juneallen.net. So I'm a racial uh, trauma therapist, I'm a business coach and I'm also a facilita facilitator. So today's topic, we're talking about um, spring reset reminders. Okay, spring reset reminders. Just some ideas that you might want to kind of think about. So the first thing I want you to think about is... 
to be intentional to start being more intentional maybe over the winter time your your consistency about self-care has kind of dropped off a little bit and you've maybe not been doing it as much because you've had a lot of other stuff going on and when it's cold sometimes you just don't really feel like you know doing stuff so now that things are feeling a little bit more that you know this it's really sunny um in london today which is always really nice you know this kind of renewed sense of you know how does your body feel about it my body always starts to kind of wake up a little bit when it's springtime so you know it's an opportunity to really think about okay now how can i be more intentional where have i fallen off you know what's working what isn't working where do i need to shift where do i need to pivot you know and it's about the more intentional you are the more you're going to get out of it I think sometimes, um, you know, many of us can get caught up in doing cri what I call crisis care instead of self-care. OK, crisis care is, is when you only do your self-care when things have gone to shit. OK, when things have gone pear-shaped, when things have gone out the window when things are looking difficult, that's when you start going, oh, my gosh, yes, maybe I need to go and do that. Maybe I need to call my therapist. Maybe I need to, you know, go and have my bath. Maybe I need to do some journaling or whatever it is. Um, and that can be quite stressful in of itself when you're doing your self-care more regularly and more consistently and you're more intentional about it. OK, that means that you're going to get a lot more out of it because it's going to be more you're going to get more out of it because it's going to be more pre preventative rather than you doing crisis care. OK, so the first thing I wanted to, to remind you is to be more intentional. OK, be more intentional about what you're doing in terms of your self-care. The second thing okay is to ask yourself are you including the fact that you are actually a black woman doing self-care i see so many women that are doing self-care but they that they don't have a cultural context applied to it okay they're not including the fact that they're a black woman and that is very very different and these are some of the things that we're going to be talking about in the workshop on saturday um so if you're interested in finding out more about racial wellness what it is um how to apply it to your self-care practice Click the link in my bio, go to heal.juneallen.net, that's heal.juneallen.net, that's heal.juneallen.net. There's an Easter special on for the next 48 hours, £30 versus £60, okay? So join, click the link in my bio to find out all of that information. So yeah, a cultural context means that you're going to be including the fact that, you know, we live inside a system of oppression, as much as we don't always want to talk about it and we don't really want to deal with it, if you if you're including that sort of stuff in your self-care it means that you're more likely to, to to get a lot more out of it because that is a if you're not doing any racial wellness or, or any sort of cultural nourishment as part of your self-care practice you are missing a massive part of your process a massive part of your process and i have a lot of women that come to me you know when they first start working with me or whatever and the light bulb starts going off for them because they're like oh my gosh the part around being black and really including that part is the part that's always been missing for them, whether it's therapy, whether it's self-care or whatever part of their healing process or stage they're at. You know, if they haven't worked, if they haven't done any work around the racial part of it, the, con the, the, the cultural context part of it, that often is a piece that's missing. And that's often the reason why. Um, so many of their, the pra their self-care practices that they do, it's not working because they're not including that part. You know, they're not including that part. So whether we're talking about physical, whether we're talking about spiritual, you know, whether we're talking about um, emotional, whether we're talking about, you know, your body, your food, your hair, all, all that sort of stuff. We, you need to be having conversations about how your self-care includes all of those things and having an honest conversation about your relationship with that part of yourself, that relationship with your blackness that needs to be nurtured. Because we live in a system that's telling us you know, consciously and unconsciously, that being a black woman is not okay. Okay, as black women, we're just supposed to keep quiet, get on with it, um, not complain, and be the mule for everybody else. So, an important part of doing your self care as a black woman is really understanding what you've internalized from not just the system of racism, but also patriarchy. What have you internalized? from these systems of oppression and and are is your behavior around your self-care in alignment with that or are you doing what you need to be doing to counteract that 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 those that those those um thoughts and those behaviors that are not serving you okay so it, at the workshop next saturday you'll have the opportunity to unpack a lot of that stuff and we can talk about it as a group 
you know the other thing that that's really really important about you know your spring um your spring reset is really thinking about how you're actually doing your self-care are you only doing your self-care by yourself you know it's important to remember that healing and doing all of this work it's a we process it's not an i process it's a we process okay you need individual care and also cultural community care okay we need individual care and we need community care that means we need to be around other people that look like us and sometimes that in of itself can be painful you know and this is one of the reasons why um you know when i do my workshops or when i when i'm doing my mastermind and stuff like that online that we always having conversations around how does it actually feel in my body to be sitting around in a group of other black women, you know, and nine times out of 10, especially people that haven't worked with me, they always talk about how they they feel anxious. And I always just put, I talk about the elephant in the room, the fact that black women find it so difficult. They find it so difficult to do this work with other black women. And that's why I put the elephant in the room because once that conversation is had, you know, by the end of the session, people are laughing about the fact that, you know, because no one really, no one's really um, brought that into the, into the session. No one's really, no one really brings that into the conversation. And, 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 and we have an honest dialogue about what it fe what that feels like and why that's happening. And that is part of the whole thing around cultural context and self-care is having those conversations having those conversations around why it feels like that for us. Why is it that black women don't trust each other? How does it feel in our bodies? How does it impact how we interact with other people in the group? And the more we have that conversation and talk about that with our sisters, okay, in an honest, respectful way, it kind of dissipates the power of it. And then we're able to incorporate that. Well, okay, if I feel like I don't trust black women, if I feel like I, I feel anxious in the, in, the, in the group, you know, what can I do as part of my self-care, you know, in order, to, um, in order to counteract that? What work do I need to look at, you know, in order, to, in order to change that? It might be that you need to do some therapy. I know for me, when I was going through a lot of that stuff at a really deep level, it was mother wound stuff it was it was mother wound stuff that i hadn't dealt with and that's quite often what's underneath the surface either it's mother wound or there's some sort of wound around other you know black women in your life that's not working that's making it difficult okay for you to for you to really show up for yourself and to really show up for your for your self-care practice so it might be that the reason why you're doing all the work by yourself and you're reading a lot of self-help books on your own and you're not really you know you don't feel comfortable going into groups is because there is that mother wound stuff that's bubbling underneath the surface. There's that stuff around, you know, stuff that may have happened to you as a child around black women that just that hasn't yet been healed. But you're only going to really know that. You're not going to know that because quite often it's going on unconsciously. You're, you're not going to know that until you actually find yourself in a group or a space that is having these honest conversations. Because then once you have that conversation, you know, I see it in people's faces all the time, the relief the relief that is felt from number one, being able to have that conversation and number two, recognizing that they're, you know, nine times out of 10, they're not the only person in the room that feels like that. You know, most of us, I would say that 99% of the women um, that I work with, they've got that going on at some level. And so having that conversation helps to create, you know, it helps to create a sense of safety and a sense of, um, it starts to build the trust in, in it's just how you start to build sisterhood okay that's how you start to build sisterhood so yeah i mean that that's a really really important part in in really understanding and owning the fact that that stuff is going to go on and that's why some quite often it's so difficult for many of us as black women to get into these collective spaces and to to have a conversation about these things so yeah so the individual and collective care is really really important the other thing the last thing that i'll talk about is you know is having a vision having a vision okay around your your self-care it's all very well doing stuff in the present but is this are you is the self-care that you're doing now is it in alignment with who you actually want to be in the future okay because sometimes we'll do um self-care which is which is um relevant to how you're feeling today and that's okay to a certain extent you can think about okay well i'm feeling this type of way at the moment um i've got that going on with my body stuff i've got that going on with my you know men mindset stuff and you do your self-care in alignment with those things and that's all well and good but what needs to be added to that is what do you want to what who do you want to be in six months time 
you know, is how you feel about your body, is how you feel about your mental wellness, is how you feel about your um, your circle of friends, your, your, your relationships, is that, are you showing up in those things the way that you really want to show up? Where do you want to be? I, do you want to be those things in six months time? And unless you actually write it down, note it down, you know, to brain dump it out and think about it, about being intentional again, unless you're doing that intentionally, you're just going to keep doing the same stuff. And that's not going to get you where you need to go. You need some sort of vision as to where you're going. If you don't have some sort of map, okay, you're just going to drift. And again, it comes back to this conversation around crisis care. You're just going to be doing stuff, you know, when, when you're in crisis and you're not being intentional about it. The only way things are going to change is if you're actually get, going to give yourself some clarity around it. So the second workshop that we're going to be doing um, at the event next Saturday is we're going to be um, we're going to be creating vision boards. It's a really nice, fun way of doing something creative. So um, you know uh, you'll have an opportunity to kind of pick your you know your 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 key words that you want to focus on. Um, you know, there's loads of magazines, I've got loads of magazines of, with black women in it and, you know, there's loads of other stuff that I'll be bringing um, to really help you to get clear on um, defining, you know, who you want to be six months, six months time. And it's not about, um, it's not so much about, you know, I want to have a car or I want to buy, buy a house. It's not, it's not that type of vision, but this is specifically about how you feel about yourself. So you're going to be thinking about your body. You're going to be thinking about your mindset. You're going to be thinking about, um, you know your food you know is your food where you want it to be if you've got if you've got food addictions and stuff like that going on this is also going to be really important for you you know i work you know i work with quite a few women as well that you know have got disordered eating you know and because that's you know everybody acts out i suppose or acts in in different ways and for some women it's food you know for some women it's 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 spending or overspending you know, so this is some, these are some of the conversations that we're having in the financial therapy sessions on a Thursday evening. Um, and, you know, overspending and, and all of that kind of stuff, you know, sabotaging your own financial well-being is very difficult because that's how, you know, that, that that's become a form of self-soothing that has become destructive because you might not be able to afford this stuff. But you end up spending, you know, on it anyway, because that's that's how you get your fix. That's how you get your, you know, how you get your fix. So, um, yeah, just thinking about where you want to be and actually creating something that you can look at and go, OK, I'm in alignment with this vision board. This is what I want to be doing in the next six months. And this is this is how I'm going to stay in alignment with what's going on. OK, so if you're interested in joining us again for the workshop, which is next uh, Saturday, the 15th. Um, then you click the link in the bio and do that today for the next 48 hours. Um, there is a Easter special 30 pounds versus 60 pounds. Um, so yeah, this, it will, it will sales will end at the end of tomorrow at midnight tomorrow. Okay. You've got till midnight tomorrow to get it and we'll get back up to, um, actually there's the early bird at 50 pounds, but that'll be until Sunday. So anyway, you want to get the 30 pound Easter special. So it's today and tomorrow. Okay. So tomorrow at midnight, the 30, the Easter special for 30 pounds is going to end. So Click the link in my bio and um, and get that. So that's it really for today. So yeah, it's really about, you know, I'll just recap on what I talked about. So just some just some um, spring research, you know, it's about being intentional, okay? It's about being consistent, okay? Creating a foundational practice, okay? Build something that you can do every single day that is really simple for you to do. Okay, don't complicate it, you know, you'll have the opportunity to build a really simple daily practice in the workshop, I'll teach you how to do that, all right, has your self-care got a cultural context, okay, if you're not included the fact that you're actually a black woman, okay, you're also black, okay, that has to be part of the conversation, otherwise you're missing, you're missing out a massive part of your, of your self-care, so think about that, if there's, is there a cultural context to it, create a vision for yourself, okay, so that you know where you want to be in six months time around how you're feeling about yourself, you know, what support do you need, what can you do individually, what can you do collectively, you know, all of that, having all those honest conversations, and remember that you need individual and collective care, 
okay you need individual and collective care you're welcome Lavorne. it's lovely to see you so if you've got any questions about anything that i've shared today um please feel free to drop a um a comment um or if you don't want to if, you know i understand that you might not want to drop a comment in there so send me a direct message if you've got something that's a bit more personal that you want to talk to me about so hopefully i will see you next saturday okay if not you can find that information about how to join the, the Sacred Sister Sanctuary um, in the link in my bio, okay? If you know somebody else who might be interested in this, might be interested in joining the, the workshop next Saturday, share it with them, tag them, okay? So thank you. Have an amazing weekend, and I will see you next time. Thanks for joining me then. Bye, bye.